Hey guys, Josh from SoccerReviewsForYou.com, bringing you a video today to share my thoughts and to have a general discussion about the newly unveiled Nike Mercurial Superfly 5. Now, unless you've been living under a rock for the last 24 hours, you've probably seen the pictures and you've read the tech specs, so you kind of have a pretty good idea of what the Superfly 5 is all about. In this video, we're of course going to talk about all the tech specs in detail, and I'm also going to share some of the things that aren't necessarily talked about in the press release and share my opinions on the Superfly 5 along the way. Kind of giving you guys an idea of what to expect from the new Superfly model and how it compares to the current Superfly 4. Now please keep in mind that I don't have any personal experience with this shoe. I've never worn them, I've never tried them on, I've never held a pair in my hand. I only have the same info that you guys have from the actual press release. So that's just a quick disclaimer. And as far as when I'm actually gonna get a pair, they won't be available to the public until June 2nd. That's when they'll officially go for sale. Um, I believe just through Nike exclusively for the first little bit. Uh, but I'm gonna be working on getting a pair as soon as possible. Hopefully I can get my hands on a pair prior to June 2nd so I can have some more information and a general review of the shoes up prior to the official release if you were thinking about getting a pair. So if you wanna learn more about the Superfly 5, stick around and watch the entire video. And with that being said, let's get right into it. To start things off, I wanna answer the one question that I know I'm gonna be asked over a thousand times until the official public release of the Superfly 5. And that question is, should I buy a pair of Superfly 4s right now, or should I wait until the Superfly 5 comes out? And the simple answer to that question is it really depends on your situation. If your season's starting next week and you don't have any shoes to wear and you wanna wear a pair of Superflies, buy the Superfly 4. It's a very, very good shoe. It's the most popular top end model and has been pretty much since it first came out. It's a very, very capable performer. The big misconception that a lot of people have whenever a model is replaced by a newer model is that the previous one is now obsolete. It's no good. And, and that's not the case at all. The Superfly 4 is a fantastic shoe. It'll always be a fantastic shoe. And again, the Superfly 5, it looks great. They're telling you it's great, but uh, until people have actually used them, there's really no concrete evidence that it's any better or worse in comparison to the Superfly 4. So uh, basically my advice is if you really want a pair of Superflies and you need them right now to wear, just buy the Superfly 4. If you really want a pair of Superfly 5s and you can uh, afford to wait, you don't need shoes right now, then wait and get the Superfly 5. It really depends on, like I said, your own personal situation and what you wanna do. It's your money at the end of the day. Second question I wanna ask, answer sorry, because I know a lot of you guys are gonna ask, is how much is a Superfly 5 going to cost? They didn't release any pricing info. Obviously the retail price on a regular pair of uh, Superfly 4s is $275. The limited edition colorways as well as the Techcraft models retail for $300, so a $25 premium. I wouldn't expect the Superfly 5 to retail for more than 300. It could, it's definitely a possibility, but I would expect the retail price to be around 275 and $300, given that the Superfly is pretty much the most expensive shoe on the market right now, or at least one of them. So uh, as far as price is concerned, I would expect the Superfly 5 to be in the $300 range at full retail price. But again, until they come out, until Nike actually announces a price, that is unofficial. Uh, it's just kind of like speculation, what I would expect them to do based on what their current Superfly is at and what other soccer cleats are priced at um, in today's current soccer cleat market. So the Superfly 5, it's a really, really interesting shoe and there's quite a few new elements in comparison to the Superfly 4. With the upper, obviously it's still a mid-cut design and it's still a fly knit construction. With that being said, they've changed quite a bit coming from the Superfly 4. The upper, while it's made from fly knit, is a completely different construction process. It now features what they call speed rib 3D uh, texturing. So basically what it is, is a variation of thickness in the actual material where you essentially have these uh, vertical stripes running across the entire shoe um, where it is actually made from fly knit, where you have a variation in thickness from one millimeter to two and a half millimeters. So it's kind of just one millimeter, two and a half, one, two and a half, one, two and a half, and it basically interchanges all the way through, giving a what looks to be a pretty heavy texturing on the surface of the upper. And the reasoning for that 
uh, what Nike is saying is that it's going to allow for better friction on the ball, which in turn allows for better touch, better dribbling, better shooting, etc., etc. It's the typical marketing thing. They're going to tell you that the shoe will improve performance when in fact it won't. With that being said, it definitely will change the feel in comparison to the Superfly 4. Uh, now, the difference, I'm not sure exactly what it's going to be. As far as the texturing on the surface due to the variation in the thickness of the flyknit pattern, I don't think that's going to have a big impact on actual friction on the ball. Uh, I think a great example of this is comparing the Superfly 4 to the current Nike Magista Obra. The Obra is a flying construction just like the Superfly, but definitely has a more heavy texturing to the surface. And realistically, in terms of actual grip on the ball, there isn't much of a difference between the two. They feel almost the same to me. So given that it's still a flying it base and still a Nike skin covering on the new Superfly 5, I don't expect it to feel particularly grippy on the ball. Uh, based on my experience with pretty much any soccer shoe, what really determines how grippy the shoe is on the actual ball is the finish on the surface of the upper, not the actual texturing of the upper. So given that it appears to be the exact same texturing, I would expect the amount of grip on the ball to be very, very similar as well. What will definitely be different though in regards to actual touch and feel is the thickness of the upper. Based on how it looks, and again, this is purely speculation until I've actually tried the shoes, I can't really 100% confirm this, is that the new Superfly 5 upper looks to be thicker than what you have right now on the Superfly 4. So it's still gonna be a very thin shoe. I don't think there's any doubt about that but uh, it doesn't look to be quite as thin. It's a little bit more dense and kind of more like the Obra to a certain extent. I like the design though. I think that having the interchanging thickness in the actual upper is gonna allow for a lot more structure. What I'm hoping for is that all the structure is actually coming from the Flyknit and they've eliminated a lot of the internal fused in materials that we have on the Superfly 4. Again, that's not covered in the press release, so we don't really know until the shoes are in people's hands in terms of what's actually on the inside. But based on how it looks, there's a lot more fly wire or Brio cables, uh, depending on what you want to call it, depending on what they're going to call it. They didn't really specify in the press release again. If you look closely at the pictures, you definitely can tell that there is some kind of a cable system, just like what you find on the current Superfly and Obra um, within the actual flying it upper. So I would expect stability. I would expect the responsiveness of the shoe to be just as good, if not an improvement over the Superfly 4. The Superfly 4 is a very, very responsive shoe given the knitted construction of the upper. So uh, based on what I can tell, it looks like it's gonna be a little bit thicker. Obviously it's gonna have a more heavy texturing in terms of the finish um, because of the actual flying it construction, but the grip on the ball, I don't expect to be all that much different. ACC all conditions control, still a feature on the current, uh, on the new Superfly as well. And then of course the collar itself, a little bit different construction as far as the knitted pattern is concerned. Uh, you don't have the same uh, kind of fused piece um, going up the very back of the shoe. So hopefully that will allow for a little bit more kind of comfort and better flexibility across the back. But the collar itself is more of kind of a gimmicky thing in terms of actual performance. There's no benefit to having it there at all. There's no ankle support. There's no rigidity from it. It's just an extension piece. It changes the feel of the shoe ever so slightly. Um, so again, I don't expect the difference in the collar coming from the Superfly 4 to the Superfly 5 to, to have any major impact on the experience you're gonna have with either of the two shoes. So as far as the upper is concerned, they've made some changes that I don't necessarily think are gonna be 100% better, but it definitely is going to be a little bit different. And again, until I've actually had the opportunity to try them myself, try them myself uh, I don't really have an opinion as to whether or not I think it's an improvement or not. I think it's cool looking. I think it could be an improvement in terms of responsiveness, but again, until I've tried them, I'm kind of indifferent. I think it looks good and that's about all I have to say on the upper. As far as the sole plate and stud pattern is concerned, they've made some pretty significant changes coming from the Superfly 4. Now, the Superfly 4, the most distinctive aspect of the bottom of the shoe is the fact that it does have this carbon fiber sole plate. It looks really, really cool. In my opinion, the best looking sole plate on the market. As far as actual performance benefit though, there really isn't any benefit to the small amount of carbon fiber that you have in this multi-layer sole plate. Uh, I think a great example of this is the Nike Mercurial Vapor 10. A lot of people who've worn the Superfly have worn the Vapor 10, including myself, 
And based on my experience, the two shoes, while they're the same shape to the sole plate with different materials, they feel pretty much identical. There's no difference in performance between the two, despite one being made from carbon fiber, which you would expect to be a lot better performance wise, just based on the, the kind of exotic material that it is. On the Superfly 5, it's made from a plastic material, a single piece of plastic. They decided to eliminate layers, which obviously they have a lot of with this carbon fiber construction. And what they're saying is that the new sole plate is 40% lighter than what we have on the Superfly 4, which is kind of a good thing, I think. Again, I, I like the look of the carbon fiber, but if they can make something that's better or lighter, um, which ultimately is what you're going to notice more as opposed to any change in material, that's probably a good thing. So the Superfly 4 in a 9 US weighs in at around 7 ounces or so. So taking 40% of the weight away from the sole plate, which is where a lot of the weight in the shoe is on any shoe, I would expect the new Superfly 5, while they didn't announce any figures yet, to be probably around the six to six and a half weight ounce weight range in the same size. So about a, a half ounce to a full ounce lighter than the Superfly 4 is about what I think you can expect based on what they're saying, saying that the 40% lighter sole plate is actually a reality. So that's kind of a cool thing. Um, another thing that they talked about in their press release yesterday that wasn't necessarily specifically about the Superfly 5 is their new anti-clog sole plate system, which appears to be soft ground pro only in terms of which stud pattern variations are gonna have the anti-clog sole plate. For those that don't know what I'm talking about, it's basically a special sole plate material that doesn't allow mud to stick to the bottom of it. So if you've ever played on any kind of sloppy wet field, a soft ground type natural grass field where there's lots and lots of mud, it gets stuck on the sole plate, it gets stuck in between the studs, which one, adds weight to your feet when you're running around, and two, it clogs up the stud pattern, so the traction you get is not very good. So this anti-clog system is really, really interesting. It's, it's a, an actual performance benefit, something that I don't say very often in regards to soccer cleats, where it's gonna keep all the mud off the bottom of your shoe and allow you to have optimal traction at all times just because the stud pattern isn't getting clogged up with mud. Again, they didn't specify as to whether or not that will be available on the Soft Ground Pro variation of the Superfly 5. I expect that it will be. I think they just didn't show it because the pack that they did show will be coming out on April 15th prior to the actual Superfly 5. So when the Superfly 5 is actually out, I expect it to be included in the whole anti-clog system if they choose to continue with it, which I do expect them to do. Um, I'm actually gonna be making a video completely separate to this on the anti-clog system just because I really think it is that interesting. Uh, so look forward to that if you are interested. Um, but again, uh, the sole plate, they really didn't specify any materials. They just said it would be 40% lighter than what we have on the Superfly 4, um, which I think is a good thing. As far as other elements of the sole plate that have been changed, they did talk about reworking the shape of the Superfly, um, which is kind of an interesting thing, but at the same time, it's not really that big of a deal in my opinion. The Superfly 4 already fits really, really well, so I don't expect them to have any kind of major improvement in terms of the fit of the shoe coming from the Superfly 4. So. It's still a mercurial, it's part of the mercurial line. I expect it to have a tight fit, uh, kind of no extra space on the inside of the shoe feel like you get from the Superfly 4. Will the shape be a little bit different? Yes. Do I expect it to be a significant difference? No. So again, it's one of those things that they talked about that to me wasn't particularly exciting. And then of course you have the stud pattern, which again, uh, they talked a lot about kind of emphasis on braking and stopping and changing direction, which kind of is the case with every single new mercurial that's ever come out. The mercurial line has really built a reputation for having really, really good multi-directional traction, allowing you to push off and have a good amount of bite in pretty much any direction. And that's been the case with pretty much any generation of mercurial, despite all the changes that they've made over the years from the original Vapor 1 to the current Superfly 4. They all perform extremely well, in my opinion, at least when you're talking about the firm ground variation. They showed some pictures where uh, they based the positioning of the studs and the angles of the studs uh, on a foot. Um, I'll flash some images on screen like I've been doing throughout the entire video that'll kind of give you idea, an idea of what I'm talking about. All the studs are technically the same shape, just angled at, at different positions um, on the foot based on what they deem to be optimal for that particular area of the foot. Uh, but again, do I expect this to be 
significantly better than what we have right now from the firm ground mercurial stud pattern? No, I expect it to be very, very good, um, just like what we've come to expect from this line. So if you've worn mercurials in the past, you really like the stud pattern that they have, I think you can expect more of the same really, really good performance from the new Superfly 5 and what I assume will be the stud pattern for the entire next generation Mercurial line that of course will launch with the Superfly 5 probably around June 2nd if I had to guess. So that's pretty much it as far as sole plates and stud patterns go. They've made some changes. I think the most significant thing is the elimination of carbon fiber and going a little bit lighter and how that'll impact the final weight of the shoe. But everything else, pretty straightforward as far as updates go and I'm excited to try it out. Next, let's talk about some of the things that they didn't really mention in the press release in regards to the Superfly 5. Now, for me, the one thing that obviously most people are going to talk about with the shoe um, at least those who have just seen pictures, is the way they look. And of course, that is all based around opinion. But for me personally, I really like how the shoe looks. It reminds me a lot of the American football cleats that they've been coming out with over the last year or so, which I've been a big fan of visually. And this kind of has a similar look. Obviously, in comparison to the Superfly 4, the silhouette, for the most part, is pretty much identical. Um, but you do have the added texturing of the upper that gives it a different look. I really like the positioning of the Nike swoosh on the Superfly 5. I like that it says Mercurial right at the heel. I think it's pretty cool looking. And the two colorways that they showed off, the white ones and the black ones, they're both really, really good looking. And Nike generally does a pretty good job with colorways for the most part. So for me, I like the shoes from the get-go. That's not always the case for me. Some of these shoes, I don't love them at first and then they kind of grow on me over time as I see more and more colorways. But let me know your opinions on them down below in the comment section. Do you like the look of the Superfly 5 or do you prefer the look of the Superfly 4, which was a really, really popular shoe in the looks department. A lot of people just think this is a really, really good looking, well-designed shoe. So the other thing I wanted to talk about that is probably the most important aspect of the new Superfly 5 that everyone is gonna notice who wears a pair is the comfort of the shoe, the, the break-in process. Because if you're gonna have one major complaint about the current generation of mid-cut shoes from Nike, be it the Superfly 4, the Magista Obra, or the Hypervenom Phantom 2, it's the way the shoe fits in the heel. It's not necessarily uncomfortable to the point where it's unwearable, it just takes time to get used to it. It takes some break-in time. Once they're broken in, you're fine. You're good to go, they're comfortable shoes, just like pretty much anything else out there. But out of the box, I think it's definitely uh, somewhat of an issue that they don't feel as comfortable as a regular pair of shoes would. And given that it's a, it's a tough comparison to make because I know Adidas has their knitted line. Prime Knit is what they call it. They have the X15 Plus and they have the A16.1 Prime Knit as well as the laceless shoe, but I'm not really talking about that. Um, but those are two knitted shoes that obviously will get compared to the Superfly and the Obra, uh, being that they do have knitted uppers just like these. And in comparison to what Nike has on offer in terms of their knitted product line, I will say that out of the box, the Adidas stuff is more comfortable. So I'm really, really curious to see what they've changed or if they change anything at all on the new Superfly 5 in regards to how it fits and feels in the heel out of the box. If it's more comfortable, that would be absolutely fantastic and would basically eliminate the break-in time, not necessarily issue, but the break-in time that's required with the current generation of mid-cut models from Nike. So that's something that I'm really looking forward to. And again, I can't really talk about until I've actually tried the shoes myself, but I thought it was something worth mentioning in this video because like I said, they didn't really talk about the inside of the shoe in the press release at all. All they talked about was what was new and not necessarily some of the issues that perhaps needed to be fixed on the Superfly 4. Not that there really are that many, but if there is anything to fix, again, I think it's the general comfort out of the box in the heel region. All right, guys, that is it for my thoughts on the newly unveiled Superfly 5. Let me know your opinions on the shoe down below in the comment section and we'll get a bit of a discussion going. And of course, if you have any questions about the shoe, any questions about some of my opinions, leave those down below in the comments as well. And I definitely will get an answer out to you. If you enjoyed today's video, found it helpful and informative, be sure to support it with a like. Subscribe if you haven't already for daily videos on all the latest and greatest soccer gear. You can find all my social media information linked in the description as well. And other than that, guys, hope you enjoyed today's video. And as always, thanks for watching.